Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your J-Flight SLX 174BH travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. Most important thing you need to take into consideration is where your water and power is going to be. Now they're both going to be toward the rear of the unit, right behind the rear tire, or right behind your tire, on the off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities. Once you've arrived, first thing you can do is level your unit. I do recommend getting a stick on level, putting it on the side. Hand crank this up or down. Get your unit level. Once you got your unit level, you're going to come to the back and stabilize it. You only have rear stabilizing jacks on this unit. Three quarter inch socket. So you put that on there and crank these down. You can use a drill gun or an impact driver and run these down in a matter of seconds. I just recommend if you do that, slow down when you get to the bottom. Because remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. We only want to bring them down just until we're taut. Preferably on jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot blacktop in the summer. Keep them from sinking in the ground. Once we've got our unit level and stable, we'll go ahead and hook up our power. Now your 30 amp cord conveniently stores right inside here. Pull that out, plug it in. Should you need it, there's a 30 to 110 adapter if you need to plug in at home. Got your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. City water connections right here. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when hooking up your water. Put your hose on but don't turn it on yet. Right here to your right is your hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point is return our drain plug. Get that back in there nice and tight, and then you can go ahead and turn on your water. Go inside to your hot water tap, open up your hot water tap. That'll tell you when water's coming out. Uh, it won't be hot yet, but once water's coming out of your hot water tap, you'll know your hot water heater is full and you can turn it on from inside. Let's say you're going camping and you're gonna dry dock. Not using city water, you're gonna use potable water. That's at the front of your off camp side. Simply fill it up with a hose. No need for the water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check your levels, you can hold your fresh water button down and that'll tell you when your fresh water tank is full. Just remember, when using potable water is when you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump if you're using city water, it's already pressurized. All right, we're all hooked up to camp. Let me walk you around the unit and show you other, a few other things before going indoors. Here's your low point drain. That's where you drain your potable water if you're out dry docking. There's your AC unit. Also on your off camp side, again, your power, city water connection, and your hot water heater. Up above that's where you plug your cable in in the campsite. Here's our gray, black and gray holding tanks that will dump when leaving the campsite. Spare tire with a cover on it. Your other stabilizing jack. Here's your other low point drain. If you're hooked up to city water, that's where you drain those. Let's see where them are at. Right up in there. This is your furnace heat, heat release. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. It'll get rather warm. A vent for your microwave. 110 if you want to set a table out here and plug something in. 
access to the back of your fridge. Step, simply grab this by the front, pull it towards you. Your big pass-through storage. On the front, your propane. Your batteries, check your terminals, make sure that them haven't wiggled loose over time. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. You should bright awning light. We'll run your awning out and show you how far to run that out. So what I like to point out first, when you enter the entry doorway, make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Door here. Just left here is your awning in and out. I'm gonna go ahead and run that out while I'm showing you a few other things. Interior and exterior lighting. Here's where you check your tanks, your brand new battery, fresh tank, that's where fresh tanks the one you hold down to tell when your potable water's full. Your black and gray tank, keep an eye on them. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Here's where you turn on your water heater if you're hooked up to gas, water heater if you're hooked up to electric. Here's your 110 with GFCI reset and a 12 volt outlet for TV. Here's your fridge. Controls are underneath this plastic panel. Simply turn it on. Push the button in, we're on auto. Auto means that when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Or lift that button up, and now you're strictly on gas. If this check light comes on over here, your gas is low. Self explanatory microwave. You have a light and exhaust fan. These you will turn on and hand light with a lighter. Coming over here on the wall, turn a little lighting in here so we see something, is your thermostat. Simply turn it on and you heard it kick on. Not much to talk about in the bathroom, just that you do have a hand crank open exhaust in here. Coming over to your dinette, down on this side is your access panel to your breaker. Breakers and fuses, looks like you got 15, it's a 30, a 40. Highly recommend having a handful of fuses with you when you go camping. Underneath here, this table will lift right off from there. Fold this leg up, set it down on this lip here. Put your back cushions on top of this, that gives you another bed. Your sound system. See if we can get anything to come in inside here. A little bit of station. So dual zone, whatever's blue is on. So now it's on outside. Nothing, or both inside and outside. Also Bluetooth compatible, AM, FM, auxiliary, USB port here. Touch it once to mute, hold it in to shut off. Fire, uh, smoke alarm. A hand crank open exhaust here. Go to your AC unit. Turn that on down here. Oh, we're not plugged in. This is pre-prepped for solar over here. This is a template for uh, the tech, should you ever need to wire this off for solar, that's where that's all prepped at. And lastly on the inside, under your bed here, is your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. The reason I mention this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day and you have nothing plugged in charging your battery, Go ahead and use your battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down. What well, covers everything on the inside looks like, like we're leaving the campsite. What I like to do is shut off my interior lights. That way I can see all the lighting that I need to go through and individually shut off. Now that all the lighting's off except for what can be controlled here. Look around, make sure everything's secured down. Make sure all your vents are closed. Windows are closed, everything's secured, and we'll head on out.
lock and deadbolt your door. You don't want the horror story of your door coming open and coming down the road. Turn this handle. Now if we're hooked up to city water, we're gonna come to this low point drain. We're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks. Unhook our cable, unhook our water, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, you can take the sewage hose, comes to your convenience pack, hook that up, it's 10 foot long, on the other end into the dump, and first pull your black handle. So we have a handle on your right. Once it sounds like that's no longer draining, close your black handle, and pull your gray handle. Gray handle is gonna be your cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers, and that's gonna clean your sewage hose out for you. Take your sewage hose, and conveniently, and sanitarily store it away in your bumper. Great place for it. Again, thank you guys for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping.